So I do appliance repair videos and I got a GE front load washer here. And I'll be honest, I don't like doing door boot seals. But since I am a professional, I always have a door boot tool that helps make easy work of these. However, this is a gigantic stinking large GE washer and this, well, doesn't work at all. So how to do something totally different. This is something you can do really, really easy. And all it really takes that's really expensive or difficult is a standard wrench. This is a 5 8 Something this large, maybe a little bit larger would be perfect. But let's go in this video and I'll show you how to put on any door boot seal easily and cheaply instead of my expensive $80 tool. <laughs> this actually, I think, worked better. <laughs> Forgive me, but I'm assuming you're going to watch this video because you've already taken the door seal off and need help getting it back on. This video can work on the inner spring, certainly, but it's usually the outer, smaller ring where you tend to run into problems. To do this project, you're going to need the spring, heavy-duty cable ties. The ones I'm using are bolt dropper 8-inch ties, which are rated at 40 pounds, and you want to use the widest, strongest ones possible that are going to fit through the eyelet of your specific door boot spring. I also have a pair of side snips to cut the ties when the door boot spring is installed. You could use scissors or some other slightly sharp object to cut them though. Then the aforementioned magic wrench. And then finally a pair of needle nose pliers. To start, take the wrench and one cable tie. Thread the cable tie through the socket part of your wrench. Once you have that threaded, you'll thread the cable tie through the eyelet of the door boot spring. Once you do this, Loosely connect the cable tie to join the eyelet and the wrench together like you're making some abstract thing for an arts and craft project at school. Note the orientation of the spring because you want to keep the spring on one side of the wrench through all of the steps we do in this video. Next, take the second cable tie and thread it through the other eyelet of the door boot spring. Then very loosely clamp the cable tie onto the mouth of the wrench on the other side. There's just enough room on this 8 inch tie to manage this, which is why we wanted the first tie to be a little bit loose from the start. Now you're going to begin to work the cable ties together to spread the springs while keeping the spring mostly to one side of the wrench. It won't be perfect, but you absolutely want the spring to stay mostly to that one side through all steps. Initially you can hand tighten the spring somewhat well, but after your strong manly or womanly hands can't tighten it anymore, this is when the needle nose pliers come into play. I'd also suggest at this point for caution, consider a pair of gloves in case your cable ties fail and the spring could snap and pinch you. The pliers can now be used for a ton of leverage to pull the ties and spread the spring apart quite a bit. Now here's the comparison so far between the wrench method and my expensive door boot spreader tool. About the same distance so far, but this won't work on my GE washer, so we need to make it wider. Once you can't spread the spring anymore using your hands, grab the flat part of the tie on the wrench side and use the tip of the wrench to pivot the pliers and use that as leverage to start tightening the cable further and further and further apart. You can use this same method on the socket side of the cable tie but that side tends to be a little bit more difficult than the mouth side. At this point, we're working the cable tie for about 45 seconds, and the spring is now spread out a bit further than the max width of my tool, and at least in my case, I think it's ready to attempt the spring installation. First, you want to make sure the gasket is snugly secure against the front of the washer, and every other part possible of the gasket has been installed properly. You want to start gently by putting the wire around the gasket, making sure that it fits into the gap the spring initially came out of. Make sure the spring attached to your wrench is pointing inwards towards the washer housing itself. As you work your way around the gasket, you'll get to the point where the spring itself was initially installed, which was the bottom of this GE washer. Well, slightly offset at least. At the bottom, you can use your fingers to gently press the metal wire and spring into place as best as you can, but far more than likely that will not be enough. From here, you can use your needle nose pliers to press against the washer gasket to push the spring and wrench into place. I'm slowly working this from the outside of the spring to the inside. You want to press in very lightly 
and optionally you could use a screwdriver to press the wire and spring at this point. You could also add masking tape to the tip of your pliers or screwdriver to make sure it doesn't scrape or nick the door boot seal or the metal housing of the washer. In this example though, the spring literally popped into place with no issues, but in some cases you may need to press with the pliers on the spring or pivot the pliers towards the drum when you need to cut the cable ties. Again, I didn't need to do this. Once you get into place, simply cut the cable ties and then finally remove them from the wire with your needle nose and you're now fully done. I checked when I finished this video. It took me only eight minutes to do this start to finish and I think you'll really enjoy this method. And if this helps you, make sure to subscribe to the channel because I will try to have some more tips in the future like this to help you with things with washers. Have a great day.